Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different 12 YouTube channel. I hope you all out there are having a wonderful day like your girl. And if not, manifest, plan, and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all is surely coming to you guys for sure. If this is your first, second, third time or more, welcome, happy to have you guys. Before you leave, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into Different 12 and you come and learn. Speaking of coming and learning, I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that tries to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, first, second, third, or more, it don't matter. Just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah? All right, you guys. So today is Wednesday. It's hump day. Hump day. All right, let's get over it. Let's get it. Um, and so you guys know there's been rocking out with your girl and following my content. You guys know on Wednesdays we drop our podcast interview. And so this one I'm very excited. Uh, this one I think is a, a very special and unique um, podcast interview that I did. Uh, it was one with Pastor Baker of the um, Straight Talk. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm miss. Uh, read his title, but it's Straight Talk with the Pastor, um, uh, Pastor Baker. And so I had a, a good time speaking with him on his podcast. Shout out to him for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, this was done uh, about a month ago during Black History Month or early March. And so uh, we're bringing it to you guys and sharing with you all the convo we had, talking about healing ourselves, reprogramming our mind healing within the black community, talking about racism, and my book, of course, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift, and so much more. And so without further ado and me popping my chops, uh, let's get into it. And here, check out a, our audio interview. And once I come back on, I'll let you guys know what's going on more in different world. Yeah, here it is. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Picard with your podcast, Straight Talk, Bill Jason. Welcome back. We do have a wonderful guest on today. She goes by different. She's different. Let's just go jump right into it. Different, how are you? Good morning, Pastor. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You know, we, I forgot we, to ask, how do you uh, prefer to be addressed? What, what's your salutation? Do you prefer Marcus and Sabakur, Pastor? You can go, you can go Pastor's fine. I'm good with that. All righty. Okay. Uh, well, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Heaven, hello to everybody out there that's watching and listening. Yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T. <laughs> and I'm happy to be here with you on the uh, Day Straight uh, with Pastor Podcast, man. Yeah, we're going to, today we're going to have a, this may turn into where we have to get her back. She has a lot of information that we're going to go into because uh, she dropped a bomb on me as we got ready to end the call last time the first time we spoke, we never got a chance to delve into that because we're going to start there because mm -hmm. uh, she has an interesting life. God has done some amazing things in her life, yeah, and yes. so we're going to we're going to start right up by asking. Tell us a little bit about your childhood because you had a, you had an interesting childhood. Yes, and um, I wouldn't say like interesting. I'm pretty sure as kids, you know, we've all gone through some type of trials and tribulation or a traumatic experience. So I don't want to say like I'm special or been through anything better or worse than anybody else. It's always somebody out there that had it 10 times worse than you. So that's why I'm completely grateful and humble to God for what he has brought me through and he's getting me through. But to give you guys a little bit of background about myself, I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm 32 years old. I guess as far as uh, coming up, um, I guess I had a pretty good childhood up until the time I was 11 years old. Then, you know, my family and I, we ended up homeless for the next three years, living from pillow to post, you know, sleeping anywhere from cars, shelters, parks, even slept at a bus stop and crack house at one time. Uh, and it wasn't until I was around 14, a family member secretly placed me in foster care. And he, they didn't tell anybody where I was until maybe like six months afterwards they found out me being in care. However, during that six months of them looking and searching for me, um, I found out from another foster kid that if we stayed in and aged out, then the state of Texas would pay for our tuition, our four-year way to college. And so right then a light bulb went out in my head and I decided to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and just made that decision to spend the next four years um, basically being in the system and shuffled around um, and within that, that was a whole experience within itself. You know, I spent the next four years being, you know, shuffled from foster home to shelter to foster home. And uh, towards the end of it, you know, God's still good because he brought, me, he brought me out of that trial and made it into a triumph. I was able to go to college in 
got a four, uh, got a bachelor's degree in international business. I have two minors in business communication and economics, as well as I have my master's degree in entrepreneurship. Even in that opportunity while being in college, I founded my own student organization titled Pay It Forward, which is where my motivational speaking book was planted. I, uh, we would go to different high schools speaking with them about the importance of education and me sharing my story and my testimony. So many kids would come up to me afterwards and tell me, you know, they're going through the same thing or they didn't know and now I'm going to go to college. And so right there, that's where my motivational speaking bug was planted. I also got the opportunity, was blessed to travel or um, study abroad in Kim Young University in South Korea. And within that opportunity, I went to eight other countries and that's where my travel bug was planted. And up until the pandemic, I was traveling like crazy. I think I got enough to almost 50 countries. And so, um, although my, my life may have started out, you know, in a rocky situation, and I, I guarantee you by the God's grace, it's going to end in triumph. And I'm going to be able to use my story as an example of how God can take you from the back to the front, you know, when you believe in him and when you put your faith and your trust in him. And even though, you know, God has brought me through all of those, you know, trials and tribulations and, you know, and towards the end of it, and all these accomplishments and, 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 accolades I had under my belt, you know, that still didn't mean anything, you know, when I was dealing with what was going on mentally with me. And so it wasn't until, you know, I had to face the ugly truth about myself, you know, facing my past and my, my history, you know, coming up in my background, I was used to chaos. I, was, I grew up in a chaotic background. And so when I got placed in foster care, it was complete 360. I was actually placed in nice homes, good school district, and I wasn't used to it. And so I got that mindset that, oh, nothing's good, it's never going to last long, but they're going to get me, so I got to get them before they get me. And so I was self-sabotage a lot of the uh, good things that came my way because I didn't feel I was worthy of it or it was too good to be true. And so it was like that for me throughout my childhood, high school, college, and it transcended on into my adulthood to where it started to affect my career path. I had a lot of good things going for me, but I just, I was squandering because I didn't believe that I was worthy of it. There was this one instant where I had a meeting with a well-connected person. They just really could have thrusted me forward, forward. However, I let those demons in the back of my head get to me, you know, telling me, you know, you too country, too ghetto. Oh, they just taking pity on you because you were in foster care. And so I purposely showed up late to, to that meeting uh, because of that. And it left a sour taste in their mouth. And it was just issues like that that plagued me for, you know, nearly 10 years. And to force me, you know, face the ugly truth that whatever I went through in my past, it wasn't my fault. It was out of my control. But as an adult, it is my problem to fix. So I decided to, you know, bump that notion that black people don't do therapy. And this black girl right here is going to share some magic and go and get her some therapy. And thank God that I did because that led to me, you know, writing a book, starting a business, and, you know, venturing out to places that have never been unknown. And, you know, like I said, I just want my life to be an example of how God can take you from the back to the front when you trust in him and believe in him and you believe in yourself. Um, I feel like I talk too much, so you just jump in. No, no, no. No, I, I was going to let you finish, but because uh, I think it's interesting that because you don't hear a lot of people that talk about good things from foster care. It wasn't, I'm not going to I mean, I mean, I should have say this. I mean, only good I mean, thing that came out of that was me going to college. But it yeah, was, yeah. It was pretty hard to a, deal with. Yeah, most people have a tra uh, traumatic heart, and it affects them all the way through mm -hmm. their life. And uh, I'm glad you, you did say, you touched on something that you're right. And uh, we've got this false notion that black people, we don't go to, we don't go to counseling. Mm -hmm. I'm a product of going to counseling myself. And I believe mm -hmm. in getting counseling because uh, we, we, we've been taught, we've been trained, it's been our genetics, that we, what happens in our house stays in our house. In the house yep. But you never deal with it, even in the house. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so everybody's walking around with this, with, knowing when something's going on, and knowing there's an issue, but we can't talk about it. You don't dare bring it up because we told you not to say nothing about it. And so, uh, yeah, we got to go get some help, especially right now when uh, I see right now mental depression and everything is rising. Yes. In, in our community, we, and we'll, if I'm honest, we didn't think black people had depression. Yeah. I didn't know depression, depression existed in us. It was, to me, I was just told that we were just aggressive, angry people just yes. because that was our nature. 
yeah. but taking back our power and, and, and realizing our voices and recognize it, it wasn't our fault what we've been through, you know. Yeah. They did that to us. We know who the they is, but, mm-hmm. you know, what they brought upon us, and that, that notion could be said for us as a whole, as a community. What we went through in the past as with slavery and racial slurs, it wasn't our fault. It was out of our control. But now that we have our power and we have our voices, it's so let's take back our power and it's recognize our strength. Yeah, it's time to so, flip it. And, that, and the fact that if you know that now and you don't want to take back your power and strength, you still didn't want to play the victim, then that is your fault. Yeah. <laughs> you deserve yeah. what you're getting. And so, and that, that's just the ugly truth about it. You know, it's a lot of people that realize and understand that they have issues and don't want to go and get them fixed mm-hmm. and wonder what, why they're having so much trouble in their lives. I've tried to encourage people, hey, man, look, I got this counselor. As a matter of fact, there's one in Texas that I refer people to as well uh, that she does uh, online. And, um, and she's been good for the people I referred her to. Mm-hmm. I mean, referred to her. Okay, and so that's it's, good. Uh, she, so it's, it's an amazing thing. You sit down, you, can, you just open up like, it's like a load off. You know, yes. I'll be honest with you, it, it's hard in the beginning, but oh, yeah. you, when you make that decision to go, you have to go in with an open mind and an open heart and no expectations of what you're going to get out of it. You know, a lot of yeah. people think, That's oh, I'm going to go into therapy for one day and all my problems is going to be fixed. No, I've been going to therapy <laughs> for nearly three years now yeah. and I'm still barely oh, yeah. scratching the surface. And so it's a process. It's going to be a constant process. It's not going to be once. It's going to be a commitment. Once you start therapy, you can't stop it. I noticed that. It's going to be a. It's just have to be a part of your daily regimen or your your livelihood. Just yes. like when you're losing weight, and you're changing your lifestyle healthy, healthy wise, you got to commit to it. And so that's just what it is when it goes to, into therapy. You have to be committed. You can't, you know, start and stop. It's, it's okay if you, you know go every, like. Once to three months, I understand, and I realize that therapy is expensive. It does cost. But however, don't let money be the excuse as to why you don't fix your issues or you don't take back your power. There are some resources out there that people can use. Like me, I, I research and look for, you know, feasible therapists or free therapists as well as free resources, you know, calling a crisis hotline, you know, picking up a hobby, you know, doing whatever it is. It's not just therapy. That, that's an option, you know, like I said, you know, when it comes to taking back your power, you're the captain of your ship. You decide where to navigate the waters and do what's best for you that helps you keep you from going off the deep end and possibly taking others with you. That was mm-hmm. another thing that I realized in my depression, you know, hurt people, hurt people, and I never really understood that. And, you know, me being angry and upset at my past and mad at what happened to me, I would lash out on others and did not know it or realize it. Why? Because it was second nature really don't see the problem with it and with things of second nature to you. And so that's what therapy has allowed me, you know, to see and within myself that, you know, how I, I should stop, you know, being a reactive person and being a more proactive person. So that, again, that's what led to me reprogramming my mindset, you know, getting out, getting involved, as well as the pandemic, being stuck in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what led to me writing my book and starting my business and so look at God and what he can do for you when you yeah. take back your power and you just take control or you know you give it to him more so if you can't handle it give it to him and let him do the work for you but you just got to walk through it and show you know Corinthians 2 5 7 says well we walk by faith and not by sight and so when you're going through you know the, the valleys you have to walk by faith and not by sight trust that it may even though it may not work out the way you plan it's all going to work out for your good that's mm-hmm. what i'm realizing now question um now uh, what steps did you take i know you went to counseling what other steps did you take to i guess re change your mindset or reset well i'm real big into manifestation meditation chakra healing i was doing yoga i'm getting back into it now but I strongly believe in the power of manifestation. My motto is manifest, plan, prepare. Uh, when I say manifest, that means speaking things into existence, reprogramming your mind as far as removing all that negative thoughts and they say and replacing it with positivity. You know, there's power in the tongue and what we say out of our mouths come to life. And so when we start speaking things in good into our life, they start to come to us over time. The second part of that is planning 
getting out on paper of how you're going to achieve your goals and your dreams, you know, having, you know, plan A, plan B, an exit strategy, you know, as far as preparation goes, when I say prepare, I mean prepare internally and externally. Internal-wise, go get your mental in, in check, go get your physical in check, go fix your finances, go fix those broken bridges, go go cut those people off that mean you no know well, so that when you receive whatever it is that you're manifesting for, you will be prepared for it, you will know how to handle it. That was the problem, the issue with me in the past, all these good things came my way, you know, I'd handle it. I wasn't prepared for it, so I was wondering. So when you manifest plan for the things that you want and they come to you, you will be prepared for it. You will know how to handle it. And so every day, you know, I write in my journal, um, my little manifestation book here. I don't know if you can see it says manifest. I'm blank the other part out. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, every day, you know, I write my little blueprint as to, you know, what I want to speak into my life. And then, you know, I just have my little stickers, positive, positive sticker notes, you know, as far as, you know, with, with finances and money. I'm not rich yet, but I'm manifesting it, you know, this life that I'm going to live. I was born poor, but I'm going to die broke. You know what? I mean, I'm going to die rich, excuse me. You know what? On that, right there, I saw you put that. You know who else did that? And it came Jim to me. Yes, that's what I was going to bring up. He wrote mm-hmm. that check. He wrote that check, put it in his pocket. And yeah, they he still say, you know, he's doing life for, I think, $40 yeah. million. Dollars. Yeah, he kept it in his, he kept it, he still keeps, well, I don't know if he still keeps, but at the time he was interviewed, he still had it in his wallet. Yep. Because cause he was, he said that's what he did, he wrote it, and it came to pass. Yep. So yeah. you have to manifest, plan, prepare for the things that you want in life, and it will surely come to you. Um, and so that's, that's part of my regimen as far as, you know, um, uh, working on the, the internal side, external side. Of, of getting myself together is getting back into the gym. Uh, before the pandemic, I was on it. I lost uh, over 100 pounds, but okay. gained it right back and then some, being in the pandemic as well as uh, dealing with depression. In 2021 was a very, very hard year, probably one of the hardest years of my life. I lost five people in my family back to back to back, uh, with the last person being my mother. She died in my arms the day after Christmas, and that took me out. But by God's grace and by, by my willpower, I was able to say, knowing what I knew from, from the power of going to therapy, I immediately, you know, started my grieving process. I didn't put it off. And so 2022, you know, I took a hiatus from work. You know, I, I went through the motions as far as dealing with the first times, you know, first Mother's Day without my mom, first, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas. And that's just how I've been making it through. You said you started the grieving process readily. Yes, sir. Because yes, uh, you get so many people that don't. They, they oh, I'm fine. They, they walk around. They're strong. They, and, but then a year later, they, they, they wake up one day and, they, and all of a sudden you're like, what's wrong? Just and yeah. then it just broke down. Make no mistake about it. I am still grieving. I'm still oh, going yeah. through the motions. However, yeah. um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm better than I was last year. You know, this time yeah. around. March, you know, I was a mess, but I was I was still working through it, and yeah. it's better. I'm, I'm able to deal with it more so better now. It still hurts without her. I still miss her death dearly, but I know, and thank God, that she's in a better place and no longer suffering. Uh, she was a kidney. Uh, she, she was on dialysis for 17 years, and you know, for three days out of the week, getting stuck with three needles for four hours. You know, that's a strong woman for you, and I'm, I'm so proud of her for going through the motions and fighting the good fight until the end. You know, she believed in God, too, and as well before she left. We had time, you know, to prepare for her her departure, and so, you know, I, she made me promise her, you know, for me not to well and wallow in my, in, you know, my sorrows, to grieve her, but to move on, you know, still, and, and keep her being realized as best as I can. And so with that being said, I'd love to, you know, dedicate this and, and send a shout out to my mother up in heaven, Rachelle Raynette Shinnevert, I love you. And I miss you and everything I do. I'm going to make sure I keep your memory alive. So this one is for you. And, um, and, and everybody else that's no longer here with me. You know, I lost two of both of my grandfathers, a family member, and my coach as well to COVID. You know, that was really, very, you know, it hit, hit, it hit home for me. And so that's why for me, therapy is, is extremely important because I, I am a person. I'm being real with myself. I can see it. Not over time, not not right now, but over time, if it goes unchecked, I do see myself going off the deep end. So that's what, you know, I realized with dealing with depression, suicide, 
<clears throat> it's not a, a most of the time it's not a thought I think it's a spontaneous thing you know you, you're feeling good one day and the next day you have a trigger or a memory that just hurts you so bad and you're like man forget this I'm out of here but you just have to remember this too shall pass and you will get through it and you're not alone and so going on the deep end is not worth it it's a permanent problem solution to a temporary problem and you just have to get through it and just try through it as far as you know other things that I do you know, reaching out to other people that are going through the same situation that I am. You know, joining those Facebook groups helps. The little grieving groups. Um, what else? And like I said, when it comes to, you know, use the captain. I'm telling you my, my little regiment. But those out there that are listening, y'all have to know. Y'all the captain of y'all own ship. And you have to find what works best for you. Because what may work for me may not work for you guys. So find whatever, you know, a, a, a route that works best for you and take it as best as you can when it comes to getting your mental health in check and keeping it in check. Because you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters or when it's time to sink it. But as far as it goes with me, I'm, I'm not going to be raising no, no white flag no time soon. God has blessed me so much and has given me so much. And I still got a lot left in me. And, 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 and I know I would hurt a lot of people if I were to take myself off the boy game so that's why I'm still going to be here fighting a good fight until God calls me home then I'll be able to be with my mother again so um, that's why I'm here just spreading that message I think that uh, it's good to know because we don't really hear us talk about it we, we hear and we hear or we do it's too too late when we talk about it Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's a big time it's a big thing when you can open up and talk about it and be open before people because a lot of you are you said earlier at the beginning there's always someone going through more than what you are but there's somebody going through the exact same thing you they just don't know anybody exactly. that looks like them that does that's going through because we walk around without a mask on mm -hmm. and we keep it all all hunky go dory but in actuality we're, we're smiling on the outside but dying on the inside mm -hmm. and so uh it's I'm, I'm thankful you were able to go get and you recognized it because it comes with you first re recognizing, and it was me when I was doing when I was going through what I was going through. It was and that thought of suicide crossed my mind, and then uh, but I looked up. I had four kids, mm -hmm. and I can't leave them. Mm -hmm. and then someone said to me, "Man, why don't you go talk to somebody?" I'm like, "Man, we don't go do that. We don't do that." Uh uh uh. And then somebody said, "Come on, try it." And I went and tried it. And you're right. You have to go in with a different mindset. And the first, after the first meeting, I was like. Okay, I'll be back. So yeah. I kept going back, kept going back. And I think that's when we got to make that first step. The second step we have to make as far as when it comes to our people in the black community, we have to stop shunning and, and getting mad at each other for when it comes to wanting to express ourselves and talk about our feelings. You know, a lot of the times the cliches we use is, oh, just let it go. Just get over it. It's the past. Can't nothing come from that. I mean, oh, nothing will change from that. And, and, and now, actual, actuality, I have to be honest, as a person who believes in Christ, um, I get tired of people telling me to let go and let God sometimes when they use that as a cliche, when it's situations that really need to be dealt with. And so for me, when it comes to expressing myself and if I come across, you know, a person who gets mad at me for telling me how I feel, then I cut them off. That's how you realize in there that that person's no good for you. If they get mad at you for trying to free yourself and taking back your power, getting upset with you, then you don't need those type of people in your life, and family included. I, I hate to say it, but you know, a lot of our sorrows and, 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 and heaviness that we have to deal with in life, it does come from family, not just with black people, you know, it's like that in some other families, we have toxic family members. And so if you ever in the point to where you're trying to get yourself together and your mental health together and you have those type of people that are that are trying to block it and, 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 and stop you, then you cut those people off. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I family believe, member or not. Yeah, I believe <laughs> or, that. Well, when well, family member, I would say don't cut them off, but keep them at a distance. You people that ain't your family, you cut them off. Don't even waste no time with that. Yeah. I think that sometimes you have to... I, I, I want to preach a, preach a message that everybody can't go. Yeah. Everybody can't go with you to the next level. Yeah. And I think when, when we take counseling and marry in with Christ, and Christ is the leader in it all, 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, and having God be the very head of your life, you're able you're able to get through it easier. Look, not not well, I should say easier. Yeah, you're able to make what everybody else panics in. You're able to what God did it. But I'm 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 still a child of God. He got me. I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna go through what I'm gonna go through. But Amen. But I, I, I when I go through it though, I know He's with me. I'm not alone. Amen. So that that's that's a big thing people miss. People say because they are in Christ. Oh, I can't go to counseling. When actually, he would not have educated all these people. I believe mm-hmm. I would send all this knowledge to all these people, so that you could sit there and say, "No." Well, yeah. Sometimes you need to go get it out and talk to somebody. You need and to go express. And every person knowing if you if you have a problem and you don't want to fix it or you're too prideful, then yeah. you know you deserve what you get. Unfortunately, that's the ugly truth about it. Like I said, there's a lot of people out there that's sitting around knowing they have problems and issues. And it's just too prideful, too ashamed, or too embarrassed to go fix it. But you have to, you know, get out of your, sometimes get out of your own way to in order to save yourself. So for those out there who is led by pride and, 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 and being, you know, feeling ashamed and embarrassed, you shouldn't, you know, because you're not alone and you're not the only one. But for the, for the prideful ones out there, pride is the devil. And, and there's going to be, you know, the death of you if you don't take control of it. And so for those out there that's too prideful to go to therapy or too too ashamed or embarrassed, you know, to, to get themselves together and then check, then you have to look at it as, you know, maybe it is my fault. Maybe I am the problem if I don't want to get fixed. I am a part of that, you know, issue. Um, that was like that for me for the longest time. But once I started going to therapy and talking it out, I started to was able to free myself from my own bondage. It's a lot of the bondage, you know, I created for myself. And, you know, being with the pandemic, you know, being stuck in the house, not able to do anything, that fed into my depression. And so, and as far as, you know, with my book, when the death of George Floyd happened on May 25th, 2020, um, and he's from Third Ward, I'm from Fifth Ward. So when I wanted to, I wanted to go in March and have my voice being heard. However, it just, you know, I wanted it to be heard long after, you know, the situation is over with, and even after I'm gone. And so talking with God, Are you from asking there? for the spirit of discernment, say it again. You're from where he, George Ward? Yeah. Oh, he, I didn't, okay, okay. We live in neighborhoods right next to each other. He's from Third Ward, I'm from Fifth Ward, but we were right across the freeway. <laughs> so, oh, wow. okay. Um, yes, and so when that came, that time came, I, I couldn't march because I was like, no, I, I need my voice to be heard long after the protest is over. And so I'm talking with God and asking for that discernment. This is what he showed me in bits and pieces. I, it, would, it would come to me in, in movies, you know, talking with people that question, what if uh, this happened to you and your people? And so, you know, it started with that question, what if in 1619, Africans started dealing in illegal slave trading, whereas they kidnapped millions of English men, women, and children and brought them on slave ships to America. And then, you know, I hooked up with a dope art uh, illustrator and she, you know, did the illustrations for me and they are race role reversed. So it just, you know, it shows the other side of it, you know, so I don't want to go too deep into it. I'll just say go to my website, dipswell.net, and get my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, and, um, you know, check it out. It's, again, a book that's written to encourage and inform thought-provoking and consistent conversations about injustice and racial, um, systemic racism in America, and it's done through graphic and provocative illustrations. So be advised that this is intended for a mature audience, and so it's just content, and if you can't take the heat, just get your fire blanket and still come onto the kitchen because <laughs> that's the point of the book is to have people coming to the table and talking about these issues that need to be had. Um, now, what's time. that, what's that website again? What's that website it's again? It's differenceworld.net. Again, my name is spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T-S-O-R-L-D.net. So differenceworld.net. Go okay. to my website and get your copy. It's available now. Um, uh, as well as my YouTube channel, you guys, I do, I post a lot of my motivational uh, blogs as well, as well as the social awareness, you know, my business, Third Eye Entertainment, that's how the, the business was, was started. Once I finished with the manuscript, I took it to a lawyer, she read it, asked me the question, what's the name of your business? And I'm like, huh, what? I kept giving her the title of my book, and she's like, well, I don't think you understand, in order to sell a product to the public, you gotta have, a, you know, an LLC, and so... That's just how life goes. Once you think you know it all, or no matter how many degrees you got under your belt, there's still room for growth and learning. And 
so I had to hit the ground running and uh, came up with Third Eye Entertainment LLC. Like I said, being a person that's spiritually in tune with my chakras, uh, Third Eye was you know the best name that I could come up with. And this is what we do. We're a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services, which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. And so with my YouTube channel, I do a lot of you know social awareness, motivational speaking vlogs. Uh, for my entertainment side, I do my travel content. Um, I, I post my videos of all the places I've been. I just dropped my Aruba. Um, I think I got like 15, 20, 20 videos of the travel content. But uh, for those out there listening, you should go check it out. Come and learn about your girl. Difference World YT. Come and learn. Um, I'll drop all the information. I'll make sure my uh, pastor has it for you guys. But uh, definitely yeah. check it out and subscribe. And my website, differenceworld.net. Uh, you guys can check out all my other social media and handles on my website, my uh, Twitter, Instagram, as well as I'm trying to learn TikTok. <laughs> so I can go <laughs> <up> there, <laughs> right? Um, but, um, yeah. You're supposed to be able to do all that TikTok stuff. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm old school. I was raised by the old school. Okay. You asked the most. I was in the 90s, baby. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Early I, 90s. Yeah. I'm, uh, well, I'm a little older than that, but I'm still, uh, I don't get some of that stuff either. So I see some people there on TikTok. That's well, I will I say this. Now. I tried. The, when it first came out with all of the dance moves, but what was that? Renegade? I tried it. I was trying to get them dance moves, but by the time I got halfway through it, learning it, they had moved on to the next move. So I was like, you know what? No, uh, that's too much. Every week they got a new dance out, and it's like it gets more intricate and more intricate with the horn moving. And how do you how do you remember all that stuff? So we leave that to the youngest. Now this day time to shine. I already had my little, you know, uh-huh. session. You know, we had good music in my time. What's that? Uh-huh. Lean with it, rock with it, lean with it, rock with it. That was good. So okay. I'm good with that. Oh, she's. <laughs> She's acting like, she, hey guys, she's acting like she's 70 years old, Logan. She ain't 70 years old. Nah, but I am old school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I understand when it's your time, it's your time. When it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> but I'm still young, of course. But, you know, I just don't do all that, you know, the young, young, them youngsters. Yeah, oh, you're standing, you know what? You're staying in your in your age bracket. There you go. Yeah. Hey, look, you're not the, uh, well, I ain't going to talk about them, but the other. Because the, grandma, the grandmas I had and the grandmas they got now, mm-hmm. I don't want that grandma. My mm-hmm. grandma was good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the grandmas they got now, nah, they keep them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe they, they dressing better than some of these young gals. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Who's I that, know. Mama D? <laughs> <laughs> where are, where are In that order. From? Huh? Mama D, that's a name. Was that from a show? Uh, That's Scrappy's mama. Little mom, uh, uh, oh, Scrappy's okay. Scrappy's mama. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, love. What's the love in hip hop? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What she saying? She sang the song uh, in that order. I, I don't know the song, but I know I remember her. Yeah, she have a little song, got a little hit song, got she got her a little hit. So I can't hate on her, but uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Now, now you say you uh, going back to your motivational speaking. Yes, sir. Cause, cause you do that. How often are you uh, are you doing that? Oh, every Monday on my YouTube channel, we're dropping content. On Sundays, I do spiritual motivation, if you will. Uh, I think the one I just dropped was Walk by Faith and Not by Sight, or uh, excuse me, A Reason for Your Season. Um, So just for me, I like to say I'm an eclectic person. I know when people get on YouTube, they usually have, you know, one content that they stick to. But for me, I'm an eclectic woman. I'm I'm more than just one option. And so for Mondays, we do motivation. Tuesday, social awareness. Wednesday, we got our podcast interviews. Thursday, we do our pop culture or movie reviews. Fridays, we do travel content. How many movies do you go to? Say it again. How many movies do you go to? Oh, I just do, like, different movie reviews. Like, I just did, recently did Because it's Women's History Month. Shout out to all the women out there. Yeah. Uh, I just did She Said. Um, what else did I did? Hidden Figures. Uh, I'll do another one next week. And so that's why you guys got to hit my subscribe button on my YouTube channel and the notification bell. So when I drop the content, you guys come in different world and you come and learn. Um, so, yeah, I do a lot. I do it all, man. And so cause it's a lot of time, you know, people what some person doesn't like another person will. So for instance, for like racism, you know, a lot of white people don't like talking about racism. You know, it, 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 you know they, it's uncomfortable for them. But when you talk about mental health, they all over it. So <laughs> what one topic won't, won't like another person will. So I have something for everybody, if you will. Well, I, I have a, to go along with that. I have a 
uh, he's a white uh, bishop mm. of Church of God in Christ. Mm. He's going to be on with me next week. So, that, so that's going to drop Thursday. And he and I talked about, matter of fact, he's supposed to be on a thing I did. I had a panel on racism about a year ago. And he he couldn't make it, so we're gonna talk about it. Uh, what we talked about it, uh, we're gonna sit down and release it this week. Uh, he goes into a lot of that. People, we he's free with it too, which I like. So guys, mm-hmm. look, look for that. If you, yeah, of if you course, I'll be able to look out for that. I'm interested in hearing that part. Because he's uh he, he as a matter of fact, I didn't think he'd be as open as he was. Yeah, there have been a couple of uh, Caucasian podcasts that have gone on that have been very open and honest about the situation and that's what I appreciate about it. I yeah. love talking with those that are, you know, open and honest and willing to come to the the table and have that talk. Even if we have different opinions, that's a, that's okay. As long as we're respectful of each other's opinions and, you know, we're not trying to come from a hurtful place of, you know, of, of where we are. I believe there's power in healing your past and talking about it. You can, you can heal from your past yeah. when you address it and you face it head on. You take back your power from it. And so my theory is when we have these conversations constantly and consistently, then that's when we can see systemic change instead of systemic racism. And so that's the point of the book is to push for, and the the reason why I've written it in a controversial manner is because for some reason, it seems to me everybody loves controversy. It gets them their attention. And so that's the attention grabber right there. But Mm -hmm. once people that are mature enough to see with the four main paradigms I have, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical, they're mature enough to make it through the first three paradigms and see within hypothetical, it's more than just, you know, pushing uh, uh, pushing people's buttons or rubbing them the wrong way. I'm talking about unity, coming together as one, taking accountability and acknowledgement and talking about ways we can create systemic change. Um, I also talk about uh, other races, including, you know, Hispanics, you know, Muslims, you know, Native Americans, even the LGBTQ community is included in my book. And so it's not just about black and white, it's about everybody, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I've learned from number 45 is you go where you celebrate it and not where you tolerate it. So with this book, I understand, you know, it's not, it's, a lot of people are going to be upset about it, but I'm going to go where I'm celebrated and not where I'm tolerated. I know it's going to be people out there that feel where I'm coming from, and I look to them to help me spread the word about it. And so, again, when you go to my website and get my book, you know, I, I hope and pray that you guys share the reviews and talk about it with others. You're allowed to, you know, share the, the, the illustrations that, you know, unfortunately the protests that we might have to go to in the future. Uh, just that that's the point of it to have these conversations and if they don't want to then it'll be on us to push that envelope to have it and even if it goes nowhere fast nothing beats a failure but a try but what if pastor what if this was a generation that plants to see for the next you know mm-hmm. or the next generation so that's why I'm, I'm here doing my part I think it's I think it's a convers- conversation that needs to be had I think it not not just once repeatedly Repeatedly, yes. Because uh, I think the more we talk, uh, the because I'd like to say I've done, I've done two podcasts on racism, maybe three, mm-hmm. on racism, and each time we talk, more and more comes out. Yep. And and I mix up the I mix up the groups, so it's not just me and another black guy, me and another black lady. Mm-hmm. It's it's me, white people, and black people. We're talking, we're we're getting this dialogue going, and we're trying to trying to say things that people don't don't want to talk about. They talk about behind closed doors. Yep. They talk about it from one angle and one angle only. So we yep. we open up some other angles so they'll see it. And well, so the next like, time you have that panel, I better be a part of it. <laughs> okay, okay. As, as a matter of fact, we were talking, well, I reached out to uh, one other person to see if they can be added to the group too. So yeah, I'll keep you in mind. Okay, definitely, definitely. I think it's a needed conversation that has to happen. And it has, why, not, why not let it begin in the church? Because... I've always said, and I said every time I get, every time it hits me, the most racist day of the week is Sunday. You think? Because we, because we got black churches, white churches, Japanese churches, Asian churches, Spanish mm. churches. But wow, I that's never not thought the about that. that. That's not what God made for the church. Church, we're supposed to all be one. Yep. I, I said, I said, be, I should feel bad for coming, going to a white church, and they shouldn't feel bad for coming to my church. Mm-hmm. But we're made to make people think you can only hang out with yours. When you only hang out with one group of people, you never get a full picture. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah. 
also, and, and with my business, Third Eye Entertainment, we advocate heavily for mental health and wellness. And so I want to take this time and uh, to just reach out to anybody out there that's listening to know and understand that it is okay to not be okay, but do not ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever the case may be, talking with a therapist, a family member, a friend, mending broken bridges, cutting people off, picking up hobbies, whatever the case may be that you have to do to keep yourself from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you do it. If you need or if you know anybody that may need these mental health resources, please share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741 or for those that would prefer, you can go online to mentalhealthishealth.us or you can check out 988lifeline.org and please know again that it's okay to not be okay but do not sit there and not be okay go get help so you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters lastly remember you guys do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you guys okay do this for me that information you just gave <laughs> can you send that to me either via text or email sure, I'm going to add that to the description Definitely, section. definitely. So, so that'll be there, and it'll be at your hand. Uh, you gotta just click on it, copy and paste, look at it, and dial it to uh, for all my listeners. So you all, you'll have access to it, and you know these don't go away. Mm-hmm. And so you'll be able to see them. And I want y'all to also know, because this morning this just happened to me. My podcast went from Anchor to now Spotify owns it. So, so I want y'all to know. <laughs> I guess I'm listening on the Spotify solely now. I don't know yet. So if you can't find me on what you were finding me on, then look at look on Spotify. I just thought I'd say that because I was sitting there looking this morning. I'm going on to get a re- look and see w- how to record what I wanted to do, and they changed it. So mm-hmm. if you use Anchor, but I'll let you know Anchor. It's, I guess sold out to Spotify. So mm. so uh, now uh, your trips. Let's go to your trips. You say you go to all these countries. Do you go over how many days do you have? What's the longest stay you've ever had in one country? Oh, I can't do no more than a week and a half. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, no, um, I'll say one of my favorite trips was uh, to Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I got to see the Maasai Reserve and dance with the Maasai people. I also had an experience uh, when I was at the, the campsite, and I woke up one morning, and we stayed in an actual tent that had, like, restrooms, electricity, and there was a mesh window that I was sleeping by. And I woke up one morning to go use the restroom, and I came back, and I seen a lioness. Uh, on the campgrounds in the woods, like hunting. That's the funny thing. The the women in the, in, in, with the lions, they do the hunting, not the men. <laughs> it's the women. And okay. so uh, they were standing right outside. And, uh, I wanted to get my camera, but I was like, man, if I do, I'm going to miss this moment. So it was just one of those moments where you have to live in it and, and tell it. And if nobody believes me, oh, well. But this happened. It was very true. We were looking at each other like for a split second, and she nodded to me. She did and walked off. Wow. To me, it was like queens recognize a, a queen no matter what form we are in. And it, that 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 and not that she gave it, it just it was like an affirmation, like you got this queen, you know you know what to do. And so it, I get chills on my side talking about it right now. I was gonna say, look, hey, look, I, I probably had a different response. Okay, go ahead. That was it was it was real and it happened. And and uh-huh. I, I hold on to it. it was a lot. Of, I had a lot of good. Uh, that was one of the most memorable ones, but. Um, I had some other couple ones. Um, I, I, uh, I went uh, um, parasailing in uh, Colombia at 30,000 feet and landed in some cow patties. <laughs> so that was fun. Okay. Um, you know, I, I uh, zip lined upside down at 40,000 feet in, in Peru. I, I'm very adventurous. And so oh, definitely you. that's why you guys out there listening. You don't believe me come and learn go to my youtube channel and see i'm actually dropping my trip to cairo uh, today uh cairo egypt i've been to like africa four times and so i i, I visit the pyramids of giza the great sphinx the nile river I, i've been blessed man i've lived a blessed life i can't even complain when i look back on what i've been through and, and what i've gone it was all part of god's plan to use me as a vessel and to allow me my life to be seen as an example as to what can happen when you put god first he will take you from the back to 
front. And no, I have not made it to where I want to be just yet, but I know I will get there. Why? Because I am manifesting, planning, and preparing for it. Because I know it will surely come to me. And so that's what I want you guys out there that's, that's going after your dreams and goals. I often tell people, you either only come up like Cardi B or they come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. And so manifest, plan, and prepare for what it is that you want in life, and it will surely come to you guys. Difference will. Come and learn, everybody. Hey, guys, we want to end on that note. I thank her for being with us today. Thank you for having uh, me, King. I do appreciate it. Just oh, remind you, you're a king, and you got a crown on your head, and you're rocking it very well, and you keep doing your thing. God bless I you. I appreciate you. God bless you, ma'am. Hey, guys, I want to thank you again for joining us here. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview I did with the Straight Talk with Pastor Baker podcast. Um, I, uh, as you guys listened in and seen that we talked and I had to listen in as well, um, we talked about, you know, healing, you know, my past and my journey uh, when it comes to mental health. Uh, and, and those out there who are seeking or thinking about or contemplating uh, getting their mental health in check, uh, this was an encouragement to you guys and everybody out there that is getting their mental health in check. Keep going, keep keeping it in check, and don't stop. Um, one thing that we talked about in the uh, the interview is, you know, when do we make that decision to go to therapy? Uh, you have to realize it's going to be a lifetime commitment. It's not just a one-time thing or just a session you go to to please others. When you decide to go to therapy and get your mental health in check, it's just like, you know, committing to getting your physical health in check. When you lose all that weight, you give up the junk food and you change your lifestyle and your eating habits, that's a lifetime commitment that you have to keep up and keep going. Otherwise, if you backtrack, it's all going to fall apart. So that's the same um, uh, a meaning you can put towards when it comes to getting your mental health in check. When you do, you have to be committed to it. You have to be open-minded and open heart, and you have to be consistent with it. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, just a quick fix thing. It's not just a one-time thing. Therapy is going to be an ongoing thing, and once you start, you cannot stop, or you shouldn't stop, if you will. Um, me, I recommend for those out there, you know, who, who are starting in with therapy, you know, uh, try it out and see, you know, whether if you need it, you know, once a week, once a month, or, you know, uh, uh, six months out of the year, you know, whatever it is, you know, the time frame that works for you, just try it out and see, you know, and you never know until you try it out. And like I said, when it comes to you guys, you know, steering your own ship because you're the captain of your own ship, you guys, you know, have to decide what works best for you and doing your own homework and your own research. So, again, with that topic that we talked about, you guys, make sure when you, you know, comes to getting your mental health in check and, you know, healing yourself from your past or whatever you're going through in your time in your life, you know, make sure you guys, you know, are open-minded open-hearted and, and, and full-on committed to it because like I said once you start you can't stop or you shouldn't stop this is going to be something that you have to stick with for the remainder of your life because if, until the day you die you're going to deal with trials and tribulation that's going to be the same you know applications for me every December 26th that's going to be the day of battling suicidal thoughts you know that's a day 
you know, my mom passed away. She died in my arms today after Christmas. And, you know, last year it was just like, you know, deja vu for me, just reliving it, you know, and, and experiencing that. And it was, it was a surreal, I had an out of body experience, man. It was just, like, you know, it felt so helpless and hopeless and nothing I can do. You know, even though I know it was giving my mother comfort for me being there with her, that was a traumatizing experience seeing that. And so for me, you know, that's going to, you know, it, it ties with, you know, keeping my mental health in check and grieving in a healthy manner as well as, you know, trying not to regress back to any of my old habits that, you know, kept me stuck in a rut. And so, again, you know, if you guys, you know, listen in on that conversation and, and took away from that, uh, there's power in healing our past and getting our mental health in check and trusting and, and leaning on the Lord for those out there that believe in Christ and, you know, are... are I won't say Christian like me. I'm not a Christian. I don't, I don't complain to be a Christian, but I am a spiritual being. And so that was what's so special to me about this interview. Uh, we, we talked more so about, you know, God and healing. And uh, this was one of the most peaceful and serene interviews I've ever had. It was very calm and, you know, with the transition and us talking. And so I appreciated that. And so if you guys, you know, can be sure to check out Pastor Baker and show him some love on his podcast on Spotify. I have his link below in my description. So make sure you guys, after you for my YouTube channel, of course, hit that subscribe button and go to his YouTube channel or his uh, podcast and check him out and show him some love, yeah? And again, big shout out to Pastor Baker for having me on this show and allowing me to share my story and my testimony and encourage and motivate others. That's what I do here at Third Eye, you know, with my speakings, I try to push for, you know, change within that uh, person that's listening and motivate them to, you know, or inspire them to, you know, be the best version of themselves. And so, and I'm not perfect and I'm still a work in progress. So it's okay if you guys are not a perfect person and still a work in progress. As long as you keep pushing and moving forward, hey, that's all that counts. And so again, a uh, big shout out to Pastor Baker for having me. And if you guys liked and enjoyed our audio interview, be sure by showing me, by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I definitely appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Please keep it coming and don't stop. As well as, don't forget, go to my website, differenceworld.net and you guys can check me out all my other social uh, <laughs> social media handles I'm moving a little too fast you uh my instagram my twitter my uh my facebook anymore no tiktok <laughs> um you guys can check me out there as well as booking me for any type of motivational speaking events podcast interviews grassroots conversations just go to my website differenceworld.net and book your girl i'm free of charge as of now so get it in while the getting's good yeah as well as lastly on the differenceworld.net agenda, don't forget you can get my copy of my book, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. Again, a book that's written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And it's done through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, you guys, be advised that's intended for a mature audience and it's sensitive content. And so again, if you can't take this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen. That's the point of it all. Just get you a little fire blanket. You'll be okay. Uh, again, the point of it all is just to have these conversations that need to be had that are often swept under the rug or turned the blind eye to. Uh, and it's my hope and belief and, and theory that I have is when we talk about these uh, issues and take acknowledgement and accountability for it and talk about ways where we can create systemic change, then that is where we can see the change take place. So that's the point of this book. It's not just, you know, rubbing people the wrong way. It's more so, you know, pushing for unity and, and, and for unity uh, accountability and acknowledgement then we can come as you yeah so again go to my website differenceworld.net and get your copy of my book what if a controversial paradigm shift okay and moving right on with a different uh, gravy train what else we got going on you guys tomorrow is thursday wow man this week is going by so fast you know it's already the second week of april man and that's just how time goes it goes by fast and so be on the lookout tomorrow. You guys know I normally do my uh, pop culture reviews, so I'll be dropping content tomorrow on that. I uh, don't want to tell you guys. That's why you got to hit that notification bell. <laughs> so again, hit that notification bell. So when I drop the content tomorrow, you guys come into Difference World and come and learn and see what it is that I'm, I'm bringing to you guys. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Lastly, but most importantly, you guys, always, always our mental health check. Uh, for those out there that may need it, including myself, that's going through any type of mental anguish, being in stress, you know, illness, anxiety, dealing with depression or bullying, having suicidal thoughts, whatever that case may be, 
whatever it is that you may be going through, please know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Go talk with somebody, family member, therapist, a friend, uh, pastor, <laughs> uh, getting involved with your community, picking up good habits, dropping bad habits, you know, mending broken bridges, cutting people off who mean you know well in life. Whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and not go off the deep end as well as possibly taking anybody with you, do it. If you need or if you know anybody who may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer, you can go online to mentalhealthishealth.us or you guys can visit 988lifeline.org. And for those that are outside of the U.S. and that's watching your girl's YouTube channel, you guys can check out incounseling.com. Again, incounseling is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And remember, you guys, although I am giving you these resources, please remember that it's on you to do your own homework and your own research to find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters. As well as, don't forget, whatever it is that, that trial and tribulation that you're going through at that moment in your life, this too shall pass and you will get through it. And so going off the deep end is not worth it. So don't do it. Okay? So uh, close out a mental health check, you guys. Uh, be sure to, you know, always keep it in check and remain positive no matter what. Like I said, I like to try to bring it back to that positive energy before I close out. And so, uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in and watching uh, or listening to my audio interview. Uh, big, again, big shout out to Pastor Baker for having me. Be sure to show him some love, you guys, as well as don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely appreciate it and need it and want it. <laughs> Trying to build and grow my YouTube YouTube channel so again you guys hit that subscribe button for your girl I do appreciate it as well as don't forget when it comes to you guys and going after your dreams and goals and on your come up like that either that come up like Cardi B or that come back like Robert D you guys have to manifest plan and prepare for it and it will surely come to you guys difference well come and learn peace what if what if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.